Welcome to the Science for the Public lecture series. Science for the Public is an organization committed to bringing science information and issues to the general public. Visit our website for our program listings and blog. Good evening, I'm Yvonne Staff, and I welcome you to Contemporary Science Issues and Innovations. Tonight, we're very fortunate to talk with astrophysicist Lice Verde about the large-scale structure of the universe and especially the role of dark matter and dark energy in that structure. Dr. Verde is ICREA Professor at the Institute of Cosmos Sciences at the University of Barcelona, Spain, and an adjunct professor at the University of Oslo, Norway, and this year she is a Daniels Fellow at the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Studies here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Nietzsche Verde's research is concerned with the relationship between the large-scale universe and fundamental physics, especially the possible physics beyond the standard model. She's made important contributions in her field and particularly to developing the analytical tools that will help reveal the big mysteries of dark energy and dark matter. Dr. Verde received her PhD in 2000 from the University of Edinburgh in the UK and she followed that with fellowships at Princeton University and a faculty position at the University of Pennsylvania before taking her current position at the University of Barcelona. She's involved in a number of major large-scale survey projects and was a member of the WMAP team that was awarded the 2012 Gruber Cosmology Prize. Dr. Verde is also editor of the journal Physics of the Dark Universe. We're very honored to welcome Lice Verde tonight and delighted to have the opportunity to learn from her what she and her colleagues are discovering and perhaps scratching their heads about in an area of astronomy that is fascinating to everyone. Welcome, Dr. Verde. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. Thank you for the introduction. And I will ask you right off, what's the large-scale universe? Okay, uh, so uh, you are asking me to talk about cosmology, basically, and cosmology uh, addresses question of what is the universe made on, how it did, be, did it begin, and it deals with extremely large scales. Okay. Uh, so as uh, w we know, uh, in the u we live in the solar system, and uh, if this is the solar system, uh, the entire U.S. will be the size of our Milky Way galaxy, which is the galaxy that we sometimes see at night as some band of stars across the sky. For cosmology, galaxies are points. And, uh, and um, the typical intergalaxy separation in the universe is about this. You take one is here and one other galaxy is there. So you can imagine the scale, the, 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 the scales uh, we are uh, we are dealing with, and there is a lot of stuff in the universe. There are as many stars in a galaxy as a grain of sand uh, in a cubic meter of sand. Mm -hmm. And imagine mm -hmm. how much that would be. Imagine you know mm. a cubic meter of sand here, and there are as many galaxies in the universe as there are grain of sand on the surface of a beach. So. Imagine that a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, <laughs> and and we are we are dealing with enormous distances that is very difficult to wrap it's our yes. heads around. Yes. So it's easy. Cosmologists and physicists do that. They invert another unit of measure and they use that unit of measure, so they don't have to carry around all these many <laughs> zero, and they keep working with it. Exactly. It's big. Okay, but it's primarily then when you talk about the large scale, you're talking about galaxies rather than little solar systems and things exactly. like that. Right. Right. Galaxies for cosmologists are points. Yes, okay, all right. Then within that, does that also include a concern with dark matter and dark energy in the large scale universe? Exactly, so galaxies are not distributed at random. We came yeah. to, to okay. learn that uh, through observation and the fact that they are not distributed at random is because there is something shaping this distribution. Galaxies are cluster in groups and in clusters uh -huh. and in filaments uh, and all that makes up what is called the large scale structure. Okay. And 
we believe that this is shaped by gravity because there is a fundamental conviction of physicists and astrophysicists that is the same physics that we test here on Earth applies to the entire universe, but it also goes vice versa. Yeah. The physics you can learn from the entire universe also apply to the physics that then we can test here on Earth. Okay. And therefore, if this is what it is, then it's gravity at play. Okay, can we go back for a minute and, and, and ask about the dark matter mm -hmm. and then the dark energy, mm -hmm. just to establish, these are big mysteries, they're very attractive for everybody, mm -hmm. everybody wants to know about it, there are a million seemingly answers to this, but can we start with asking about matter in the universe mm -hmm. and our illusion that what we see is all of it, right. straighten us out, please. Right. So, what we learn directly about the universe come from the messenger and the messenger so far has been light in the forms of any electromagnetic radiation is not just visible light yeah, like the right, one we see right. it could be radio it could be x-rays yes. it could be but it's it's electromagnetic radiation and until somebody detects a gravitational wave that's our messenger yes and so this messenger can tell us a lot of what is out there in the universe but what we actually see is just the point of the iceberg okay. and we have to infer from what we see from the point everything that lies beneath the right. iceberg. What would be the percentage of the uh, like regular matter, the stuff that we see that we think we're the center of the earth? Oh, it's a very small... Oh, the stuff that uh, we are made of, uh, it's, the, 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 it's, uh, it's some four yes, percent of what's okay. of everything that's out right. there according to the latest measurement uh, the latest right. uh, consensus of the researchers okay. in the field and then so that's time yeah this dark matter that you infer uh, e right. evidently then w how much of that is there and according to the latest yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is Got about <laughs> some, some 20 something percent on yes. 23 percent give or take yeah. and but that's that, a lot uh, that's uh, th that's a lot but still is not the whole story right to get from, from right, right, 20 right, something right. percent to 100 percent uh, there's right. a lot there's of more uh, there. space there but at right. least as long as we talk about matter it's matter okay you know how it uh, behaves and dark matter has been around for quite a bit the first person to suggest dark matter was uh, an, a Swiss astronomer in the 1930s yes. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so it has been around uh, around quite a bit and of course a new measurement and uh, has been always been refining all this but you know the first idea of dark matter it's right took it's a while old, huh, to get to be general knowledge mm, and yes. so on so do I understand you infer this you can't see it you can't get your hands on it do you have like what could be the possible what should, substance what mm -hmm. what is dark matter if you it, well, mm. right now. <laughs> so, so, so uh, we come back to another late motive, and what makes me so fascinated about about yeah. cosmology and the larger scale structure and this connection between the infinitely big and the infinitely yes. small. Yeah. So. Uh, Particle physics that study the infinitely small yeah. believe that uh, as a simple extension of what is the standard model, there will be a lot of particle coming out yeah. and this particle behave like all dark matter. Uh -huh. If you then scale up this on the scale of the entire universe, they behave exactly like what we believe is dark matter. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. So it will, in principle, if one could detect one of those particles right. with one of these uh, uh, big detectors that go underground or yes. even make it in one of these particle accelerators, yes. then you would say, aha, I've seen it, uh, the infinitely small, and then I see the effect on right. the very largest scale. Okay. This hasn't happened yet. Yes. It could happen. Any time. Yes. So I'm yes. sure that's one of the things that they're very interested in at CERN, yes, and you've indeed. done stuff there too. Indeed. Why is it so elusive? Well, is there is there some is it does it work like you know radiation most of it is not visible to us anyway right. and but we can detect it right. but this you have to infer I, I think you is have to correct? infer um, it's called dark exactly yeah, because right, of this right, because right, it right. does not easily emit radiation okay. like 
the one we can we can detect with detectors. Okay. So uh, that's why it's elusive. Exactly. So if you you're hoping to find a missing particle, basically that will answer yes. this. Yes. And you have ways of sort and of then on for it. when one looks at the instead of a very large scale, since this particle still behaves like matter and still behaves to gravity the way matter does, uh, and it pulls and push the visible part of matter, then one should see its effect uh, on the visible. I That's see. how Zwicky I see. first that, say yes. there is uh, some dark yes. matter there. Visible yes. matter was moving yes. far too quickly right. to be contained. Right. And what was containing it right. had right. to be dark matter. And that's why Vera Rubin in the 1970s said galaxies are spinning far too fast exactly. for all the stars that we see are there. There should be right. something else right. in there. So there is no question about that. What's missing is is what it is, correct? Um, or do you there is no question. 90% of the, or, or probably more, of the community would agree with this statement. However, until we actually see that particle, one should keep an of open course, mind. Of this course. is uh, uh, the challenging things about uh, doing uh, science, but also the exciting thing of about course, doing science. So yeah. we have taken uh, the laws that we have tested here on Earth and we are extrapolating them on two very large scales. Yeah. And we are assuming they work the way we've tested them so far, yes. which is fine. Right. It comes to a point where you may ask yourself whether this extrapolation is the correct thing to do. And with dark matter, probably, you know, it's a small percent of the community that will be give, willing to give up the extrapolation of the law we know and love. Mm -hmm. If we come to dark energy, that percentage goes up. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, yes, I understand. I can't wait to get to that. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yes, yeah, no. right. So. so, because that's almost the more exciting thing yes, in yes. a lot of ways. So, dark matter, we leave that behind for a while. You're looking for a particle there. S and particle physics are you wouldn't for know anything about it if you weren't looking at the big structure. The, uh, so the by looking scale. at the big structure, you may probably glean some properties of this yeah, dark yeah, right, matter, like because since it is, it makes up the scaffolding yeah. of the visible matter, okay. if we can trace very well the visible matter and infer how the scaffolding is made, it may tell us something about its property. Okay. Is it, uh, does it collide? Does it not collide? Does it have some uh, uh, velocity dispersion and so it erases uh, the, the uh. small scale structure? One typical example is neutrinos. Yes. We know neutrinos are dark yeah, matter because right, they yeah. interact very weakly. Right. They, mm -hmm. We know they have mass. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, they cannot be the whole dark matter, but in principle, we can measure the properties of neutrinos and their masses by looking up at the uh, sky. Okay. We can do it in the right. lab. Well, particle right. physicists right. can right. do it right. in the right. lab, right. and then cosmologists can do it right. looking up at the sky. Right. And again, it's another area where it will be very nice to see that the two ends meet and right. measure the same right. thing. It will be wonderful. Right. Yes. But meanwhile, it's meanwhile, always exciting we keep, in that we keep field. Working, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Well, then, the next thing, the juicy thing here, is mm. really the dark the, energy. The dark and energy. I think, is that like your big thing yourself, mm. that you're very interested yeah. in that? Or? Not only me. <laughs> I understand that. I it's know. it's probably, that. you know, the biggest yeah. conundrum yes. in physics yes. today. So <laughs> I'm in good company. <laughs> right. So it's OK if the general public scratches its head, too. Yeah, because the community is also scratching their heads. But it keeps head. things interesting. Yes. OK. Now, this was, I guess, interpreted, was it 100 years ago? I'm thinking of Edward mm. Hubble and, and stuff, and then confirmed so did somebody get a Nobel Prize yes. for confirming so, it? So it was something out there. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, Hubble is said to have discovered the expansion of the universe. Yes. So the universe uh, is expanding, and uh, that's uh, very well and good because it tells us a lot of things. That, uh, but one thing is to say that it's expanding, and the other thing is to say that it's this expansion is not slowing down. Yeah. Because the universe may be expanding, but if there is matter in it, and matter is governed by gravity, yes. gravity is an attractive force, eventually yes. this expansion should slow down. 
But. But. <laughs> and that's, that's the Nobel Prize you were mentioning. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, in the end of the 90s, it was, find, it was found out that this expansion was actually accelerating. Yeah. And uh, I always like to show, you know, a little uh, bear here. Yeah. If I throw it up, yeah. it will come down eventually because gravity is an attractive right. force. I don't expect uh, this to start going up and then accelerate and going unless it's got an engine in its tail, okay? And, but the universe seems to be doing exactly that. Yes. And that was discovered at the end of the, of right. the 90s. Uh, now, since then, this seems preposterous. And so it takes a while to sort of accept it. And since, since then, there are other line of evidence that point exactly in the same direction. And, and when you have different line of evidence relying on different things in the uh -huh. sky, relying on different physics, that you really have to believe it even if it's preposterous. Right, uh, yeah, yeah, completely counterintuitive. Completely counterintuitive. May I ask you another thing before you go on in there? I think for most of us, one of the hardest things is to understand that it is space expanding and that is yes. accelerating. Yes. But when we think of this, we're usually given the raisin loaf, do you know, and yes. they, to, to, as the analogy here, and the raisins spread out yes. and that's that. But that's enclosed in something. And yes. so I think one of the hardest things for us is to understand this space, it is not enclosed, this thing that's yes. expanding. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Although having the analogy of the yes. raisin loaf right. is still good enough because right. if you are a raisin inside the loaf, yes. that's all you need to know. Okay, so it's that makes things spread out and this is out. going faster and, and faster and faster. faster. There is no question that that's happening, correct? The acceleration is definite. Uh, this is oh. what all observations seem okay. to point all right. toward. At, at what, with whatever the tools are at this time. With whatever time. the tool at this right. time, with okay. what understand, this is what. All right. Now, may I ask, if, if you have this dark energy and the whole thing is so hard to grasp, mm -hmm. then I hope it's hard for astrophysicists to grasp as well. It's very it, hard it is. for the general. It's really Everybody difficult. Everybody is, is, uh, is scratching their, uh, good, their heads uh, good, with good. it. Good, good, Well, it's right. comforting to know that. Um, are there, what, what do you think Mm -hmm. are, are candidates for, what's the okay. reason, what is this dark energy? Do you have any so ideas? So the uh, easiest candidate to think about uh, and uh, uh, what should be our starting point and it's our starting point. Use some sort of standard model you start off with. It is Einstein cosmological constant. Oh, and we, you know, it yes. has been a hundred years yes, of, of relativity, yes, yes, so yes, we've yes, all yes. heard about this. Right. This is something that is associated with nothing. And since nothing doesn't dilute as you make more nothing, it's nothing. Uh -huh. Then it's something that has got always the same density regardless. Uh -huh. And this, you put it into the equation and it makes the universe of the, the, the dysfunction of the universe accelerate. Okay. Now, why should nothing have something associated to it that behaves right, like harder. dark energy? <laughs> uh, but it must be telling you something about mm -hmm. the very fabric of the space. Mm -hmm. So again, okay. infinitely big and infinitely small right. that connects yeah, again. I see. And so if uh, uh, physicists that, that want to study the fabric of the space time, for example, string theories or something yeah, like that, right. manage to understand that, that will give an answer to the cosmological okay. constant problem. Okay. But that's the, the starting hypothesis, the null test hypothesis. Okay. Then from there, there may be other options. Okay. It could be something dynamical that is not always constant, as far as we know. Okay. It, uh, could, be, it could simply be that uh, we are looking at scales that are so large that maybe Einstein's gravity uh -huh. does not hold anymore. We are taking a physical law that has been tested up right. to solar system scale, yeah. and it's been extrapolated many orders of magnitude. Okay. And there's no other physical law that we know of that has survived such a big extrapolation. Okay, However. It, may, it may also <laughs> be that. Yeah, right. Did you tell me once, though, that 
the, one of the problems with gravity uh, possibly is that uh, what we use for gravity as a force, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say locally, but mm -hmm. what we know to be mm -hmm. gravity, which is to Back pull things forth. together, mm -hmm. at extremely large scales may operate very differently. We don't know. Uh -huh. This is exactly what, I, what I'm saying. Okay. So we start from the assumption that the physical law that we test here on Earth are valid in the entire universe. But who says that the physical law that works at this yeah, distance right, or this right, distance right, or this right, distance, right, it's right. valid on scales that are right. vastly, vastly right. bigger. Just, it, it, it could be different. Now, yes. we don't have a theory that predicts that. Okay. But of course, the universe doesn't care about no, the theories we have. No, it doesn't. It keeps racing not. away. <laughs> it keeps racing away. So <laughs> yes. So are there any other possibilities for what has caused or what is mm. dark energy uh, that uh, are, are a, of interest to you? Or uh, it's uh, so. Whoever cracks this problem cracks probably the most fundamental oh, problem in physics today. Right. Uh, really exciting. What what I think is that this is probably by now a too big problem to crack uh -huh. without more observational information about what is this cosmological okay. constant. So to what level are we sure that is a constant or maybe yes. it's not a constant uh -huh. or to what level it it really behaves like gravity we know and love, even on those very large okay. scales. And so what the community is trying to do, and I'm involved course, with it, and what yes. really, really interests me, is to think about checks like that, Yes. right? So uh, could we test that it's not just the expansion of the universe, but it's also how things fall into each other? Yes, I see. Right. Could we test if that's the same, if right. this matches or not? Right. And could then you? I think <laughs> yes, and I think that we we could yes. do that. Okay. The, the, the technological development allow to make observations that cover that go to such a large distances with such a precision that what could try to answer this kind of question. Okay. Now you've been are these these like gigantic surveys, these big international exactly. you've done I don't know how many you've been involved in and the I guess the most important one and now there are all the, there's even a dark energy survey yes. I guess now. But yes. you're involved in this. Please tell us if mm -hmm. you would how does that work? And I take it these are different kinds of probes. Is that it? And yes. you will check them? Yes. Maybe, yeah. So uh, what is recognized is that in order to understand dark energy or the accelerating universe, right. we really need to have different probes uh -huh. that try to measure the same thing or believe are measuring the same yes. thing. Maybe maybe it turns out that right. our theories right. are right. not right. correct right. and they're measuring, right. but it will be good to measure them exactly. and then check exactly. that. And so this survey needs to be uh, large, they are expensive, it needs a lot of expertise, they are large international collabor collaborations, and uh, they need to do a different type of analysis and then compare and, combi and combine them. Okay. They, 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 need to be care they need to deal with very large data sets, yes. they need to be careful that the analysis of all the statistics are done correctly, that uh, all possible errors or uncertainty are under control, and so uh, it requires coordination. Uh, yes. yes. So there are uh, several things that you mentioned. Just want to mm -hmm. uh, underscore, I think, mm -hmm. for, for all of us, that you have multiple types of investigation, so these yes. surveys, yes. that these are huge international teams yes. of the best expertise out there, naturally, that, uh, I'll just put parenthetically, you still scratch your head a bit, <laughs> I yeah. guess. And then there are these analytical tools mm -hmm. for this enormous amount mm -hmm. of data. I believe that's one of your specialties. Yes. It's what you've gotten quite a bit of press for. Um, can you tell us something about mm -hmm. that? So here comes this data. What do you do? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, um, so the first thing uh, that people do with this data, they try to compress them. You can't deal with you everything. Can't look at okay. everything. But also, you compress them because you have, or we have, a model 
of the universe, this uh, standard model I was yeah, talking right, about. Right. And then in this standard model, this tells you what combination of data carry useful information and what combination carry not useful information. Okay. So, so there's some compression going on there. There may be loss of information if we are completely in the wrong track. Hopefully we are not completely on the wrong That's track right, because right. so far <laughs> everything has worked so well uh -huh. to such a level of precision yes. that we cannot be completely on the wrong track in case there are small perturbation yeah, around right, this right, model right, and right. therefore we are confident that we right, can do this. Right. And so one start defining statistical quantities yeah. that compress this data massively and absorb or include all the interesting information. I see. And then from that, one try to compare this quantity with the theory and try to make the comparison, keeping in mind that one needs to propagate all the possible uncertainties yes. through, uh, because a measurement is nothing without an uncertainty associated with it. And Good there's point. a lot of work going on in to say, I've measured this quantity with this tiny error bar, but I'm sure that that tiny error bar is the correct one, yes. right? There is no use to have, I measured this quantity with this tiny error bar, and then in reality, the error bar was about uh -huh. this big. Okay, <laughs> all right. right. But you, in a sense, if I understand it, you have a kind of cross-check because people are doing this in sort of different ways, which gives you a Indeed. check against... Indeed. Uh, the, uh, Indeed. And that's very... Indeed. It must be Indeed. exciting when there it starts to look right. Exactly. Indeed, there are different groups yes. doing very similar analysis, but also different groups doing completely different yes. analysis and then checking. And now I think the next challenge that we have to be able to meet is Try not to check halfway through. <laughs> uh -huh. Try to check at the end of everything. Oh, so just, no temptations just here. No, no temptation, no picking. <laughs> no picking. You just, you know, you calibrate what you're doing, you yes. do it, yes. and at the end of it, you uncover it. Because yes. otherwise, you know, it's too easy to actually say, I'm really tinker here, yes. tinker that, yes. because this one's on. So that, I think, is our next challenge I see. to get organized. So. I see. So a lot of this is not just looking up the sky, <laughs> but it's really working with immense data. There's a lot of looking up the sky. There's a lot of development of technology or of instrumentation uh -huh. and everything to be able to look up at the sky. And also, if if you want to really get those tiny error bars, as the yes. city promise, all this quality needs to be kept under control. The quality control needs to be exquisite from the very beginning. Uh -huh. From, you know, when the instrument is being thought, constructed, right. Right. organized, etc. Right. All the way to the analysis, but my expertise is in the last part rather than in the yes. first part. So that's right. why I'm talking right. about exactly. the second part. But, but every step needs challenge. to be very rigorous, yes. Yes. Now, and so you have focused on this data uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in particular. Just in general, are you pretty optimistic about how things are going in terms of these huge international projects? And you've been a, a member of a number mm -hmm. of them and stuff. Are you feeling like, yes, we're on the right track? I <coughs> cannot guarantee now that the mystery of dark energy will be completely solved <laughs> by, by the end of it. But I'm sure that the information will be key <coughs> for whatever generation will actually manage to crack the problem. Yes. I am confident right. of right, that. Right, right. You've been involved in a number of these projects. Mm -hmm. We don't in the general public have a real good sense. Mm -hmm. We hear about the W map and mm -hmm. the, all these uh, mm -hmm. uh, all these huge surveys. Could you tell us uh, any one that is of particular interest to you that you thought that you enjoyed most? Or? Uh, hmm. that's, a, that's a very Hard That's question, a hard question to, they do to answer things. because they, they do different things. It's like, you know, asking you to choose among your kids. Yes, of right. You Can't cannot do choose. That. Okay, understood. <laughs> but it's, you know, Retract it's, that. it's, it's, <laughs> it's exciting okay. and uh, yes. Okay, and before we leave the dark energy, dark, dark energy, dark matter business, is there a relationship between these mm -hmm. two? Are they somehow connected, connected or they happen to be properties of the universe? Okay, uh, so the 
current baseline assumption we start off with is that they are not connected. Ah, okay. That one is mother and the other one it's something probably to do with the space time or some field right. or something like that. Right. However, uh, this hasn't stopped people to actually postulate that there are connection, right. dark connection right, there, right. and some limit has been put on how big this connection may be, okay. assuming something about right. how this connection may so be. This so it, uh, it doesn't stop people asking the question and trying to go after okay. it. And this is another of the things that it, we could be able to, we will be able to test. Right, yes. okay. How is this affecting your understanding of the universe? Do you expect us to have like a whole new idea of the universe uh, or and also the laws of nature? Is there, do you expect anything there different? Uh, if everything is as in the standard model, yeah, then right. there will be no surprises, but that right. will be a surprise that there are no surprises yes. because uh, that model is unsatisfactory. Uh, according to uh, the understanding of the structure of the space-time, the standard model of particle physics, right. etc., etc., it shouldn't be that way. Okay. And so I'm sure that whatever we find out, it's going to tell us something. We're going to tell us something that we are not understanding and it's going to give us some clue on how to understand it better. Now, I don't know if we will understand better things at the very large scales or better things at the very small scales, like infinitely small right. or the infinity, or probably both. Right, right, but you do. But there's something there and we are going to learn something about it, except that we don't know the answer yet. <laughs> right. Now, you have a particular interest, I think, in this stuff beyond the standard model. Is that just sort of the general mental framework at this time in astrophysics in, in terms of large-scale structure studies? Um, that I think it depends a little bit on your personality. There are people that are a little bit more conservative, uh -huh. and then they believe that this standard model that oh. we have, where dark energy is that's a cosmological constant, it will remain so. Okay. That, uh, our understanding, our the error around the model, we get right, smaller, right, and right, smaller, right, and right, smaller, right. and smaller, and smaller, and smaller, and we remain so. Okay. Uh, there are others that believe that can't be going on forever. The model has got to crack at some right. point, and we'll see the cracks coming out. There are some other people that say, well, we are already seeing the cracks. Ah, okay. <laughs> which, which team are you on there? Uh, I prefer to be agnostic, honestly. Oh, okay. I prefer to let the data <laughs> okay. speak. Okay, right? all right, and if I you prefer, say so. I prefer to let the data speak, analyze, and see whether they say, uh, yes, this minimum model still works extremely well. This is a crack you can taper over it. This is a big enough crack that you should really be careful about okay. it. It's telling you something that the foundation of your model are being shaped. But you mentioned something really interesting that you're going to let the data speak mm -hmm. for it. Will most people accept that? I'm saying this because there have been many cases in many areas of science where the data is in your face, you know, and people say, no, it can't be that way. And right. there's a resistance, you know. What right. do you think? Do you think that we're at a different point? Um, I don't know if we're at, dif at a different point. It's much easier uh, to believe what the data tell you still in your face or not, if you have mm -hmm. an alternative model that fits much better, uh -huh. right? If all you have is a model that start not working, yeah. you keep gotcha. hanging on to it yes, because we right. do need a model to make yes, sense of the I world. Understand. And even more when we talk about cosmology and astrophysics where yeah. we are talking about experiment, but we don't make experiment, we yes, just make observations exactly, and we have exactly. to, to sort of interpret those observations. Right. And so we are heavily relying on, the mo on a model. Okay. And so in the absence of uh, a better alternative, it will be very easy and it may actually be okay to hold on on a model that somehow doesn't work because 
it has worked so well so far that right. somehow it works right. and is useful for something, right? right? All hope. models are, are wrong, but some are useful. Yes. And the one we have is extremely useful. Yes. So it can't right. be that wrong. Got <laughs> it. Okay, well then, thanks. So that takes us to this, I will, before we leave this and go into like your own personal history here, I'd like to ask if the Higgs, the discovery mm -hmm. of the Higgs, did this uh, does, has this had an effect on your perspective uh, within this yes. field? Yes. So <coughs> before the Higgs, a lot of what are called uh, uh, scalar field have mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. postulated, mm -hmm. but none have been seen. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, dark energy, a scalar field. Now, before the Higgs, you just say, well, you know, you're talking about white elephant and yes. you've never seen uh, any of them. I they may see. not exist, but now at least one exists. Yes. And so there could be another one. Yes. And it could be, may right. well be the dark energy. Right. So this opens up the possibility and they looked for that thing for, I forget yes. how many decades, yes. you know, just, yes. uh, uh, and uh, probably people resisted that too. So uh, before it was a theoretical so. possibility, yes. Now it's, it's theoretical plus it has yeah. been seen. Yes, yes, right. So this really does have an impact yes. on how people think. That's good to know because it took a long time to get that. But now I'd like to know about your own history, which is quite interesting. Okay. I told you I met uh, a lot of women from Italy. Is there something in the water that is in astrophysics and mathematics, mm -hmm. which is quite rare? here, mm -hmm. at least until recently. How did you come to get into this field? And were you okay. just this little genius right off the bat? No. So somebody, when I was learning to read, uh, was probably about the age of my daughters now, gave me a book about the sky. And I got hooked. Isn't I got hooked about the part of the book that was about, you know, not just the clouds, right, but right. beyond the, sky, the clouds, about right. space. Isn't and I just got hooked. Now, it may be interesting to some of your audience to know that I wasn't actually really good at math when I started. <laughs> Neither uh, was Einstein. Okay. <laughs> because it, math it seems to me something so abstract. Mm -hmm. Why one plus one should be two? Could be three, zero. Yeah, what right. do we know? And wh what does right. it mean? So the moment I, uh, I, d I realized that mathematics describes the world and describe right. not just the world around us, but it could describe the yeah, entire universe, reality, yeah. that's when numbers started making sense, I see. right? And now to these days, I'm not really good with numbers. Honestly, I don't remember my own phone number, but- But you do statistical- I do that. I like the rigorousness of that, uh, right? That the moment you go down the road of mathematics, uh, then you know it describes the physics and there's no escape from there. And I, it, now it doesn't matter if in your head you get it wrong by a little bit, right, as long right, as in right. your head you get the order of magnitude right. correctly and then the computer will actually, you know, put all the right, decimal right, figures. Right, 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 right. But yes. so uh, that's a comfort for everybody. You knew you were going to be a scientist, I guess, early on. Uh, and is that the idea? Um, mm. Well, not that early in the sense that until uh, high school, I was doing uh, languages and literature and Latin say, yes. and ancient Greek uh, and that yes. sort of things, and I switched later. Yes. So you went on from there. You had a very interesting education. It could be in England, and, uh, I mean, UK, Edinburgh, yeah. and uh, you've done work all over the, the world and so on. Uh, has this affected the way that you think? I hope it did. Yes, <laughs> I right, hope it right. Did, but I just wonder. I, I, I haven't seen the alternative, so we can't make yeah, an yeah, experiment. That's right. you, okay, I can't experiment <laughs> but, with that. But, but I, think, I think it did. Yes. Right, right. I'd like to add for our listeners as well that you have twin daughters, age four, <laughs> and that your husband, who will be with us next week on another subject, uh, somehow you two manage to raise this family and do all this incredible work and be all over the world and everything all at the same time. It's marvelous, but I just want people to know that it can be done, evidently. It can be done, yes. Uh, it can be done. Do you want to tell us about how it can be done? <laughs> um, 
I don't know, somehow it, it, it can be done. done. It can be done. It right. gets done. It, right. You know, you don't sleep much, but you yeah, don't sleep you much are, anyway. Sleep. But it's cheering to know uh, that people should not be discouraged, that you can do these things. You can yes. really have a very productive career in this field and have an outside life as well. We yeah. have sometimes the illusion that people never get out of the lab. <laughs> no, yeah. it's you take the lab with you in your head when you go of outside, course. but uh, you know that's that's the way it is, and that's why it's exciting, and that's why we're all passionate right. about what exactly. we do. Exactly. Right? Okay, and while you are here this year uh, at the Radcliffe Institute, then you will be working, or uh, you are working yes. on this uh, beyond the standard model kind uh, of thing? I'm working in trying to make sure that we are not fooling ourselves either yeah. in the standard model or going beyond the yes, standard I model. Understand. You're <laughs> the I checker. Want to, the I big, want right. to make sure that we start thinking how to set up all these checks yes. and what the checks could be okay. and how everything we say about the universe can be made more robust. Uh -huh. And okay. Trustable. Right, right. Well, you lead an exciting life. You've Thank made you. many contributions. I urge people to take a look at our web page for this event, uh, which has the link to your web page in Barcelona. And Dr. Verdi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank tonight. you. Okay.